too many people are getting ready to quit. They typically garden between the beginning of spring and the end of summer, and that's it. But there's a whole array of vegetables out there that can be grown throughout fall and into winter. Today, you're gonna get two for one, because Kevin from Epic Gardening has joined me to bring you six fall crops and how to grow them. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is UK Year We Grow and on this channel we deal with all things gardening, poultry keeping and beekeeping. If you want that perfect garden to relax in or just want to grow your own nutrient dense foods then start now by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified each time I release new content just like this. Being the great host that I am it's only fair that I let Kevin take the lead and his first crop to grow through fall is perfect for adding to those winter stir fries. Over to you Kevin. So the first crop we're highlighting is actually not one singular crop, it is a family of crops, so to speak, and that would be Asian greens. Asian greens, like this Chinese cabbage here, are a perfect fall crop because they will thrive a little bit more in cooler temps. So the beauty of Asian greens is that there's simply so much variety. As we open my seed pantry, I will show you just some of the ones that I'm thinking about this fall. So the first one is Mizuna Benihushi. This is a fantastic variety that I highly recommend you all try out. It's a very beautiful, easy grower, and works just so well in fall. Next one is going to be a classic. We all know bok choy, but this is purple lady bok choy. So you can see a theme here. I like to go with the ones with a little more anthocyanin content, a little more deep nutrition in there. If you like a more dwarf variety, Pak Choy Dwarf 4 Inches is a really good one. This is Joy Choy, another fantastic Asian green that I really like growing. And then you've got a Pak Choy variety called Purple Magic that I really, really like. Now, some tips for growing Asian greens. Many do actually tolerate heat, but most of them do really well and get nice and sweet as they come to harvest closer towards that frost date. So what I like to do is if I'm planting them right now, I like to throw some sort of cover over it to protect from those late summer, early fall pests like the cabbage loopers, the worms, etc. That's my one pro tip. And now we're tossing it over to Tony for a crop that takes a, just a little more patience than these Asian greens. Thanks, Kevin. Asian greens are fantastic crops to grow through fall. Now guys, if you really liked what Kevin just had to say on his very first crop, then make sure you get across to his channel and check him out because I'm sure you're gonna love his channel just as much as you do mine. The link will be down in the description below and in the cards above. My first crop to grow in the fall is winter onions. Autumn planted onion sets are very easy to grow. They are fantastic and look after themselves over winter. But they have a long growing season, typically not being harvested till just before the summer. So it's really important to consider where you're planting them because you'll want to be able to put crops out in spring. But onions are really hungry plants, but they don't need loads of nitrogen. So plant them into beds or ground that was manured the previous spring. Just turn it over and then plant into that bed. If you plant them into a bed that's just been manured, then you're gonna find your onions will bolt. Plant your onions two inches deep and four to six inches apart. Larger spacings are gonna allow you to use one of these. Now, this is an oscillating stirrup hole and they're fantastic for weeding between onions. They can get rid of all those weed seeds as they germinate, which will make your life much easier keeping them clean. Onions don't compete well with weeds. At planting time, water them in well and consider covering them over with some fleece or some netting to stop the birds because they'll see the little tops of these onions and you'll come back the next day and find your onion sets all over the surface where the birds have pulled them out thinking they're worms. It's important that onions don't dry out when spring arrives because if they do, then the plant will get stressed and they will bolt. Now, if this happens, it's not the end of the world. Simply cut off the flower tip and harvest the onions at that point. You can still use them in the kitchen. They just won't be any good for keeping for long periods. And at harvest time, don't be tempted to leave the onions in the ground longer than about two weeks once the tops have died back or flopped over. Because if you do, organisms are gonna get in and it could start rotting process or even the regrowing process. Anyway, that's it for my onions. Back to you, Kevin. Awesome tips, Tony, love it. And I cannot wait to see your onion harvest 
My second crop that is potentially one of my favorite fall crops of all time is, ready for the reveal? Cabbage. So cabbage is a quintessential spring and fall crop. You can see I've got it in a new raised bed that I've just put in and we're planting it somewhat densely. These are gonna be a smaller cabbage. This is a mini Kisaku 50. So for a small cabbage, you wanna go about 14 inches apart. For larger, massive cabbages like ones I've grown in the past and ones Tony's grown in the past, you wanna go at least 24 inches or two feet apart. Cabbages are a heavy feeder, especially nitrogen. So they're going to do really well if you amend your beds with a high nitrogen fertilizer, some really nice compost, of course, will do the trick. You could use something like feather meal, or there's some other products like well composted chicken manure, chicken droppings will do really well for cabbage. Another thing you'll notice is again, I'm using these blankets, these protective frost covers that it's not for frost, it's for the fact that cabbage gets decimated by a lot of common pests. Your cabbage loopers, you can see I already have damage here on some of these tender leaves and I'm doing my best to prevent that by creating a full physical barrier, a full floating row cover that I pin down with clothespins to make sure that I have no pest damage. Well, that's enough out of me and cabbage. It's time to toss it back over to you, Tony, for one of my favorite crops of all time. Wow, brilliant, Kevin. Like Kevin, I love growing cabbage too. And this one took me 11 months to grow from seed to plate. My next vegetable that I'm gonna grow is garlic. And garlic goes so well with onions. It can be used in so many dishes. And its pungent flavors can really make a meal something special. Plant your garlic in mid-autumn in well-drained, fertile soils. When planting your garlic, ensure that the basal plate goes downwards. Plant close four to six inches apart and in rows 18 inches to 24 inches apart. Make sure that when you're planting your bulbs, they are about two inches in depth or at least the depth of the bulb down. Now, planting garlic in these conditions is ideal. They typically love to get around six hours worth of sunlight a day. And when you do that, they can take about nine months to mature. Water garlic sparingly because they hate wet soil. And as the weather warms up into summer, then you wanna reduce watering a bit because they need this dry environment in which to produce large bulbs. Garlic doesn't do well with weeds either, so consider mulching your garlic in the winter. Use straw or chopped up leaves to protect your garlic, and this will also help you get much larger bulbs at harvest time. The added bonus here is that the straw or mulch that you use will also protect the ground from leaching away its nutrients through the winter with the onslaught of all the bad weather. Back over to you, Kevin. Epic tips, Tony. Thank you so much. And I can't tell you how excited I am to start my own garlic because I just got my seed garlic in. So stay tuned for that coming down the line. But my third crop, again, it's kind of a family of crops, is broccoli and cauliflower. Now you might be wondering, why am I in the shed? Why am I not out in the front yard showing you my broccoli? That's because my broccoli is actually still being started from seed. And that's because here in my warm climate, Broccoli and cauliflower, these heading brassicas, they need cold temperatures in order to form a head. Because I'm in such a warm zone, I have to stagger my planting a little bit later into fall to make sure that when they're coming to maturity, they actually are getting those 60-ish degree temperatures so that they do form a nice tight compact head. So that's my first tip with broccoli and cauliflower is to make sure that you're timing your fall planting for a moment where you're actually going to get the temperatures it requires to grow well. So broccoli is a crop that likes even temperatures, we know that, and it likes even moisture, which means if you're not using mulch in your raised beds or wherever you're planting your broccoli, now's the time to start. I know Tony over on his channel does a lot on making leaf mold, which can be a fantastic top mulch. You can also use grass clippings, straw, wood chips, whatever you want, as long as you're providing a nice barrier for that soil to remain evenly moist 
And you know, with broccoli, you can do a little overhead watering. It's okay, but I would refrain from overhead watering as soon as those crowns start to form, because then you can really start to introduce rot. But early on in its life, especially if like me, you're in a warmer climate with hotter temperatures during that fall transition, overhead watering can actually be a really good way to cool down the leaves as well as penetrate water into that root zone and keep it nice and cool. Paired with the mulch, you're gonna have a really healthy and evenly moist soil. Broccoli, like cabbage and many other brassicas, is a heavy feeder, so you're gonna wanna give it a top dress or a side dress throughout the season, as well as prepare your bed really nicely. So if you've just harvested your bed out for, for summer, which I just did, I wanna give it a nice top dress of a couple inches of compost, as well as maybe throughout that season, in that middle phase of growing the broccoli, I may give it another side dress of compost just to make sure I've given it enough to thrive. Okay, that's it for broccoli. We're throwing it back to you, Tony, for the final plant in our fall series here. Give it to us. I am very excited. Another one of my absolute favorites. One more thing before I hand it off to you, Tony, I just wanted to say thanks for collaborating with me and allowing me to hang out with your audience. So guys, thank you so much. And if there's anything that you'd like to learn about urban gardening, warm climates, using different systems like this one that I have right here, uh, head on over to my channel. Lots of fun experiments and knowledge going on over there as well. And now, Tony, back to you, mate. I certainly have saved the best for last, Kevin. And my last vegetable to grow in fall is kale. Now, Cavolo Nero and Nero di Tosca are the only varieties that are grown in Italy. And that's for good reason. It's because they taste the best. And their large leaves would be fantastic in joining Kevin's Asian greens in a stir fry. They are brilliant plants. This plant will grow in most soil conditions and even in partial shade, but it does prefer full sun. And it's an ideal plant to use as a follow-on crop after potatoes or something else, because you can plant this into ground that was previously manured last spring. Kale will benefit from a sprinkling of poultry manure around the roots and chicken manure pellets are an ideal nitrogen source. It's perfect for leafy greens like kale. Another good feed would be liquid seaweed because this can really stimulate growth on the plant. Now kale suffers with all the usual brassica pests, things like cabbage white butterfly, cabbage root fly and also white fly and I'm a big believer in using nematodes in the garden it's totally organic which is how I prefer to grow and nematodes are fantastic now there's good and bad nematodes but it's important to note that all the nematodes you can buy in the store are all good varieties and they will really help you in knocking back these pests Kevin has a fantastic channel guys and I really urge you to go over and check him out because you wouldn't want to miss out. He has fantastic information there. Now I've been a viewer of Kevin's channel for years and it's been great that I've now got to work with him in this collaboration video. Like before, all the links for Kevin's channel are down in the description below. So make sure you get over there and subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you've enjoyed this video you can subscribe here and when you've done that if you've got value from this video and you want to learn more about what winter veg you can grow then you can visit my blog here i've just recently put out a brand new blog that'll be perfect i'm tony o'neill this is uk here we grow and remember folks you reap what you sow i'll see you in the next video bye bye